This is the new Wolsey Theatre, which, which uh, I've come here for a long, long, long of years as well. And I hope you will come, even though I have been inside loads of times and I have been to the uh, behind the scenes, like here and inside, and it's really enjoyable. Just well, if you walk in, that look good. Huh? If you walk in. Sure. You're right, Marcus. You got it. You got it. We've got it. We're red light flashing. We're rolling. Okay, I'm here today from West Suffolk College to interview Peter Rowe, the artistic director of the uh, Pants Hello. Nice to see you. Nice to meet you. Um, thanks for interviewing today. Um, I have got 15 questions, as I always do with radio. I know you've got loads of work to do today, but these are always quite quick. Great. But. Here they are, because all, a lot of these are mine, only a few from the college. And this is a two question. When did you start writing rock and roll pantomimes? About 20 years ago now. That would be... 1997? Yes, about, about that, I think. Yes. And finally, what is your favourite rock and roll pantomime of all time that you have ever directed in 20 years? It's always the one that you've done most recently, so... Red Riding Hood? Yes, it's Red Riding Hood at the moment. Actually, I've got a fondness for Cinderella because that was the very first one I ever did. Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay, can you play an instrument on the stage and set at all here in the New Wolsey Theatre? All the actors do. I can't. <laughs> you can't? <laughs> Oh, that was one of the questions. All, all the actors do, yeah. You don't play like the drums? I don't. I got to grade five violin when I was really? about 14. Shame you could only do a violin here. Yeah. <laughs> really, I know. Uh, third one. How do you choose famous celebrities to play the lead role in your rock and roll pantomime every couple of years? Well, like Steve Rushton last we, year. We, yeah, we had Steve last year. Well, I saw him in a show in, uh, in London, American Idiot. Um, and I knew that he was interested in moving from music into being an actor. Okay. But we don't usually have celebrities in our shows. It's not based around celebrities, it's based mm -hmm. around the company of 10 who do everything. So in a way the company is the celebrity. When do you think you'll have your next one? Next person? No idea. Really? Steve, Steve, was, a, yeah, Steve was a bit of a wonder. <laughs> really? Even though he was from some door? Yeah. No, we were just... Uh, and we were lucky to get him. He's, he's a musician who's wanting to learn about acting, so that's really how that came about. I see. What is your favourite show that you have ever done in the past that you love, but you cannot turn it into a rock and roll pantomime that you wish you could, and that was mine? <laughs> that's a really difficult question. Because um, I looked on your, um, this, well, your career and experience on the internet. Yeah, I don't think, um, I mean, when you're, when you're writing a rock and roll pantomime, it's important to choose a story that everybody knows that, um, that it's a Christmas story. Um, so not every uh, play is, is right to be turned into a rock and roll pantomime. Really? I, thought, <coughs> I think I, um, I've kind of just about used up all the stories that could be turned into a rock and roll pantomime. Really? So like the Lady Killers, for example? That isn't. Yeah, that, well, I don't think you can make a rock and roll pantomime out of the Lady Killers. <laughs> Yeah, Lady Killers is, is close to being a pantomime, it's true, but no, I don't think it would work in, in this context. Any others you would wish you could turn into a rock and roll pantomime in the next couple of years? No. No? I think, I think I'm, I've exhausted all the titles. <laughs> no, no more to do. Really? you still got a long way to go though. Well, we'll go right back around the titles that we've already done. Really? I think so. Okay. How do you know to choose which actor and actress goes into the best roles into your pantomime every year? Oh, well, we audition actors. We get them to come along and sing and play their instruments and sometimes read a bit of the script. Mm -hmm. um, but quite often, as you know, we use the same actors that have been in previous years. So once you get a, a good actor who's suitable for this sort of show, you tend to try and use them repeatedly. So it's usually a mix of about half two thirds of people who've done one before and, and uh, about a third of people who are new to it. I see. Just one quick question. Neil, did you uh, put the camera on me as well? Yes, both oh, of you in Thank the, in you, the just to check. This is another two question. What kind of questions do you get from the public and on stage about the rock and roll pantomime? 
We don't get many questions. Actually. Really? We get a lot of comments. We get a lot of people. Uh, we do a survey by email after people have seen mm -hmm. the show, run by a company called Purple Seven. So we email people, oh, and ask, them, that. ask them what they thought of the show, and, and they they mostly thankfully say that they had a really good time. So we don't we get we don't get many questions. We get a lot of um, uh, comments back, but even from the stage. Uh, yeah, I don't think there are many people in the audience asking questions. There's lots of shouting. Mm -hmm. There's lots of shouting uh, oh, behind you and, oh yes we do, oh no we don't, that kind of <laughs> shouting, but there's not a lot of questions. I see. And also, is this the job you wanted as a child? Yeah. You did? Yeah. Have, did, before that, did you ever want it to be something else? Not really. I mean, I, <coughs> I, was, uh, I was an actor in a youth theatre. I did some acting when I was at university and then started directing and decided that I was definitely a better director than I was an actor. Didn't know whether I could direct really, but I knew I could direct better than I could act. In the end you did. Yeah. At what age? What age did I start directing? Yeah, that you decided to do it in the end. Well, I was probably about 20. Hmm, past my age. Yeah. <laughs> I'm 22 anyway. Are you? Yes, I am. Um, Peter, what is your favourite part of the new Wolsey Theatre every year when you come in when you come in, what's the, the thing I, I enjoy most? Yeah, when you. Come I suppose in. the rehearsal process. I enjoy being with a company of actors, making a making a show in the rehearsal room and in the and, and in the theatre during the, the technical rehearsal room. Yeah, so the whole, the whole process of getting a company together and working on a show is my joy. And also, what was your first ever rock and roll pantomime called? The first one I wrote yes. <coughs> was Cinderella. Really, Cinderella? Yeah. The first one I directed, which was before that, was another Cinderella called Cinderella and Her Look and Fella, written by a man. That kind of reminds me of. Yeah. Are you going to do any more like Disney ones into a rock and roll? Like Cinderella and stuff? Uh, well, we've, I've, I've done a Cinderella. Yeah. I, I, I think I've, I've run out of stories. I was looking at maybe doing uh, Rapunzel, but I <laughs> couldn't quite make it work. What about Robin Hood? I've done that. I can't remember the play that I swear to years, it's gone. Getting there. Peter, what is what is about your hobby and your interest in music theatre that you like every year? What about what about music theatre do I like every yeah. year? I suppose uh, doing new new musicals, new ones that I haven't looked at before, you always fall in love with the music uh, as through the process of rehearsal. The tunes go round and round your head like these ones do. Is that what you say to all of the uh, magazines that always came to you, which I found on the internet? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. You know more <laughs> about what I said than yeah. I Yeah, did. <laughs> I did, and, uh, and you kind of almost said the same thing. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> I haven't got many left now. Peter, have you ever been in a rock and roll pantomime play before? Uh, only in dire emergency. Say again? Only in a really, really bad situation. There was, a, there was a, a, an occasion in Liverpool at the Everyman Theatre when uh, the the Dame lost his voice completely. So okay. Baron Hardup stepped up to play Dame, and I had to go on and play Baron Hardup. Yeah. <laughs> it was a bit awkward. Have you got a picture that I can look? No, no thank, you. <laughs> thank you. I haven't. No. Really? So any? You'll never find it online either. Do you know which year that was? It was uh, a long time ago. Could you tell me the year roughly? Be back when I started writing. So, so 1997? Yeah. Have you done any more since then? No. You haven't been in? There was a, uh, an anniversary show that yeah. we did, I think when, I, when we'd done 10 years here at the New Wolsey, okay. when we did a pantomime and tried to get all the people who played Dame in the previous 10 years back okay. to play a bit of the Dame. So every time the Dame turned up on stage it was a new person. Um, and I did a very brief appearance in the window as a dame. In that really? Way. Yeah. What? For two lines. This is not part of the question, but what's about the dame you really love? What do I love about the dame? <laughs> yeah. Um, the, the anarchy, I think. Okay. Yeah. The, a, a, a bloke wearing a dress has a license to say things that shouldn't really be said. <laughs> See, last five questions. Out of the theatres you've been to, like Southampton, London, Chester, Liverpool, Stratford, Leeds and Ipswich, this is the career you've been experienced, I found on the internet, which one is your favourite theatre? This one, and probably the Everyman in Liverpool. I've always had a, a fondness for the Everyman in Liverpool. If you had to choose here or Liverpool, what would it be? It would be here. Really? Yeah. And what, yeah. 
And which one would you recommend for the public to see? Well, this one, obviously. <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay, is there any story? This is one of my uh, other tutors called um, Rachel. Hi, Rachel, from West Suffolk College. Is there any stories behind the scenes involving any celebrities that may have happened through rehearsals? No. No? No. Are you sure? Yeah. Ah, she'll be disappointed. <laughs> Sorry, Rachel. <laughs> Is there any shows you have done in your Arthur theatres and Ipswich that you would like to bring to the new Wolsey Theatre? I don't think so. I think most of the ones that I've um, that I've done elsewhere and done here have been done now. I mean, to be honest, it's always more interesting for a director to be directing something that they haven't done before. Mm -hmm. So you only repeat something when you know that it's a really good fit for the theatre and that it's going to do well for the audience. And I think most of those that I've done have been done here now. So. Well, I looked on the internet and actually there was only a few you haven't, but I can't remember where they were, <laughs> yeah. really. But would you like to bring those the remaining ones left here? I don't think so. I don't think there are any, any that I've already directed that I think are a right for here that we haven't already used here. Really? Yeah. I see, just three questions left, but this is another two question. How <laughs> do you know which right pop songs to go into the right pantomime every year? Well, that's tricky, but that's also the fun of writing them. Is trying You've to got like it. the Red Riding Hood Needle in the High Set, for example. Well, it's no longer in the show, that. What? Yeah. But you put it in the um, books. Did we put it in the Yeah, in the you script? put it into the leaflets and stuff, into the books. There you go. Really. So we've changed our mind. So what? It's all, it's all fake news. <laughs> so are you going to apologise to everyone? Uh, no. <laughs> what? Because I don't think they'll be disappointed when they come and see the show. I think they'll think we made the right decision. So what did you change the needle to the haystack to then? I think we just cut it. I think we just cut so it what off. are you going to replace it with? You need to replace something if you cut it out. And not necessarily. It depends depends what, what the running time of the show is. You need to make the story make sense, but yeah. I think we decided that we didn't need that song to make the story make sense. Where would that be now? In the middle area, Star? Yeah, yeah. I, think it was, I think it was, yes, I think it was the Dame song. Oh really? Yes, it was, that's right, I remember now. So what's Dame going to sing now? The, the Dame sings uh, Light My Fire instead, which is much more better. Oh really? Yeah. So are you still going to have the same number of songs even though the hay needle in the hay starts not there? slightly fewer songs than in that first draft. Really? The, yeah, so you know, we've not done the show before, so that that um, leaflet publicity was based on uh, the idea for the show. Did you wish though you could have just left it alone? There's always there's always changes to make. Really? Yeah, during rehearsal and, and sometimes even when the show is in front of an audience because you don't know exactly what the show's rhythm is going to be like until you put it in front of an audience. Uh, would you tell the uh, people who would make the leaflets and the books every year though before doing it? Okay. So, so you tell them before the people who made the books and the leaflets, saying all those descriptions stuff. We when when the books and the leaflets are made, we make our best guess about what the show is going to be. Ah, it's a guess, not actually true. It's true at the time, but then mm -hmm. it changes. I see. And also, is there a pop song that you really like, but you haven't put into a rock and roll pantomime that you wish you could? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> that's mine. <laughs> Yes, there are some. There are some, I can't think of one off the top of my head now, but there are some where you think that's a great song, but when you look at the lyrics, you can't quite fit it into a story. And you can't, I think you can only tweak the lyrics so much and still be true to the original song. So if it if it's radically needs rewriting in terms of the lyrics to fit the story, then you, you just have to leave it alone. Would you put in, like, example, an Ed Sheeran song or a Take That song? There's an Ed Sheeran song and a Take That song in this show. Ooh, could you tell us? No, you'll have to come and see it. Oh, come on! <laughs> see it? Uh, I know Light On My Fire is Take That in Lulu. I knew that. That's right, yeah. Shine is in there. Uh, cool. Uh, and Thinking Out Loud is in there. That's not a single, that's just a promotional. Just th thinking out loud, the Ed Sheeran. Oh, that one, yeah, sorry. Sorry, I was thinking about take that, sorry. <laughs> sorry for a sec. So, yeah, I've only got two left, and that will be it. How long does it take to prepare for the rock and roll pantomime every year? It takes the entire year. <laughs> really? Well, you start thinking about the next one almost um, uh, uh, when the year turns. So 
I think we decided we were going to do Red Riding Hood in January. So when the show's finished at the end of January, then you start again? Yeah, even before the show's finished, to be honest. Really? We're talking about what the next one will be. So you need to think ahead? Yeah, you need to think ahead quite a long way. Well, the design for the show has to be done usually by May, because May? the set gets built. The sets usually get built when there is downtime in workshops, when set building workshops So you don't kind of keep the same then? No, it's a new set for every show. Really? Yeah, yeah. It looks the same every year, doesn't it? Not quite. Oh, really? the, the band are probably in about the same place. Yes. But the, uh, the, the story the, the story book, if you like, is, is different every, every time. I see. Uh, yep. Oh, got that, sorry. Uh, and also, does you... That, do you approve all the designs for the set and costumes? Yes. Yeah, it's a collaboration with the designer, but the great thing about writing a, a, a new one and, and working with Barney, who's the designer on the mm -hmm. show, we, we work in, in consultation as I'm developing the story. So he, he sketches together what he thinks will work and then I write to some of the, the design and he designs about around what I write, so it's a, it's a collaboration. Just before my last question, but this is a funny one, do you ever get dressed in their costumes? No. <laughs> oh. No, it will be good. Only, though. only every ten years. What? Yeah. Why? For a very brief appearance in a Oh, winter. really? Yeah. But how things? Are you going to do it soon? What? Well, get dressed in the costume? Yes. No, absolutely not. <laughs> this is my last question, which is: Do you ever think you always want to work on rock and no? So, I'll say that again. Sorry. Do you ever think you always want to work on rock and roll pantomimes from now on? I still really enjoy doing them. Um, we have a great, uh, uh, an awful lot of fun. It's really hard work and it's a great deal of fun. You prefer this, the rock and roll pantomime today, and your other shows you've done in the past? No, I prefer a mix. So I really like doing this, I really like doing mm -hmm. musicals, I really like doing serious plays. Mm -hmm. I'd like to be able to go on doing a mix of different things mm -hmm. rather than just one. Thing. In part of the question, which one would you choose from now on? That is the question. Which the ones one? you've already done like that carrying on, but miss the rock and roll, do the rock and roll and miss all the other shows into the future. I don't think I can I don't think I could choose. Really? If you had to. I wouldn't I don't think I I can't see a situation apart from you asking me the question where I would have to. <laughs> really? Yeah. But you can't choose. I wouldn't want to give up the rock and roll panto, so I have a great, have a great So time you would doing choose that. that? Yeah, I'd choose that. My last one is for you, really, to yeah. me. Peter, just before you go. Do you have any questions for me at all? What, what are you going to use this uh, interview for, James? What's it? I'm using this interview to carry on finishing my project for the college to to uh, to put on my CV so that I can get a job into the future in the next couple of years. And what's the course that you're that this is going to? Media form production of? level two. Right. Okay. Any other questions for no, me? That's it for me. There you go. You can turn it off. This is James Darkins reporting from West Suffolk College, interviewing Peter Rowe, the Artistic Director of the Rock and Roll Pantomimes. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Hope you enjoy it. Like, choose to pick up on stage or stuff. You know what I mean? They, Every year. Yeah, they often pick someone who sat on the edge of the row. Really? Yeah. <laughs> why Why not to, like, front the top or middle, would you say? Um. It was easier to get them out of the really? um, easier to get them out of the out of the audience if they sat on the That's side. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> and also another question you might know: Why do they want to uh, run on the stage and go in between people for fun? Uh, do you know what, that? When, when they do their chase, <laughs> yes. well, it's just an excuse to get close to the audience, isn't it? I think the audience. Really That's why. That. Yeah, <laughs> it is quite funny though. It is. Maybe this year we'll have like a werewolf chasing Red Riding Hood along the stage and people say, Oi, we got my <laughs> stuff, we don't have much space. We have well, John Hughes there, ah, get out of the way. Well, I think you'll, you'll find out, won't you, in, um, in January? Yeah. yeah. But that so this, is one of the, this is one of the wings here. This is behind the scenes here, isn't it? Yeah. Cool. So this is the stage right wing. So these are prop tables here, so you've got lots of props from the show. Flowers, um, sort of custard pies, things like that. Big <laughs> mallet there. Cool. Cool. Okay, more props here. Badger. Um, Can I? Phone. Just ask, um, why do they have to come here a lot? 
Um, um, when they go, let's see, they go off and yeah, come, they come to and They come and grab props. And then oh, they, really? Yeah. Ah, uh, I was wondering why. Okay, right, we're going to go under the stage now. Uh, cool. So, be careful of the steps. Do I want to come, you two? <laughs> Don't worry, you're still recording. You're still recording? Right. Yep, which is cool. We're going into the... This is the sub-stage area. Ooh. <laughs> this is going to be quite cool. Substage. Substage. So we're under the stage now. Wow. Um, it's quite dark That's in this place. Stage, it is. Might not be able to see very well, but up here is the stage. Wow. Um, and these are the trapdoor mechanisms here. So really? One on, one on this side, and then one on this side. Just over here. Just behind the black curtain. So, oh my god! Yeah. So basically, the trap—the way the trap door works okay. is there's a there's a trap lid up here, which we were standing on on the stage. Yeah. Um, so three technicians will be working around this area. Mm -hmm. um, when they want to operate the trap door and send someone up onto the stage, mm -hmm. one of the technicians will pull back the trap the, the, the trap lid. Yeah. And lock it off. Uh, the actor will be standing on this platform here, which has got a bit of wood, which is exactly the same mm -hmm. as the piece that's on the stage. Count you in. Three, two... Yep. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. Are we, are we rolling? Yeah. Great. So this is the trap mechanism here. Um, so during the show, it'll be very dark down here, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, there'll be a lot of smoke. So you'd have one technician with a handheld smoke machine filling this place with, um, uh, with, with, with sort of theatrical smoke. Mm -hmm. um, what would happen if you want to send an actor up through the trap door mm -hmm. is one of the technicians would pull back the, the trap lid. Mm -hmm. So this here is, um, is, is sort of past the stage at the moment. They'll pull this away mm -hmm. um, and lock it off. Um, two other technicians would then pull these bars up mm -hmm. and push this platform with the actor on it up onto the stage. Mm -hmm. And there's a counterweight around the back to help that uh, mechanism work. Uh, and it would all happen in a couple of seconds. Uh, and because of that smoke being, um, being mm -hmm. filled into this area, and there'll be some pyros going off as well, some small sort of indoor fireworks. Um, it would look as if the actor is appearing on the stage. Okay. Has there been any faulties with these before? No, not here. No? No. Lucky. There, well, no, 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 no injuries. That's there, good. I think there have been other things. Or any uh, people got stuck, tried to go down and it wouldn't move? I don't think so because the mechanism's quite smooth and there's nothing that can really get in the way. That's quite cool. Yeah. So we've got a trapdoor here, we've got mm -hmm. one here and one on that side. Cool. Um, there is um, there's a tradition in pantomime. I'm not sure if it's in all theatres, but certainly in this theatre, that the um, the good character will come up on the stage right hand side. Mm -hmm. So on that trapdoor over here, and the bad character or the evil character would use this uh, would okay. use this trapdoor. So every time you come back to the pantomime, you'll notice that those characters use the, the same sides of the stage. So for the Red Riding Hood, mm. the bad guy, the, the wolf would yeah, be here. The wolf would use this one, yeah. And the Red Riding Hood would be over there. Or the, yeah, would have the, the, the very godmother type yeah. character is, would use that one. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to see everything else, please. Okay. <laughs> okay, this is part of my work. Okay, sure. Like, what we'll do is we'll have a look um, at the rest of the substage area. We'll have a quick look at a dressing yeah. room. And then that'll probably be yeah. Okay, can I have a look on the other side, please? Stage left wing? Okay, right. Um, <laughs> this is one side of the left hand stage, just right here. It's quite cool because they all go different directions. So they go through there, so yeah, they do. Yeah. Go and then this is the stage left wing. This is the left wing here. This one. Cool, and just this. right over here. Okay. Oh, back to the other. So what's through the curtain then? What's through there? That's just the, that's just the same part. Oh really? Yeah. Cool. Right. Okay, let's have a quick look at the dressing room, shall we? Yes, yeah. please. And then we'll um, then we'll probably wrap it up. Okay. Yeah, almost. Just taking a, just gonna have a look at the stage. Okay, cool. And can you play any instruments? I can, but I'm not, I can't play. I'm not gonna play those ones. Oh. I'm set up ready for the scene. Oh. Uh, and, and the I would like a demonstration. No, no, I shouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't like someone to play my guitar when I'm not there. <laughs> Really? Aww. I really wanted a demonstration. 
can we have a look through our clear, please? Um, no, we shouldn't go onto that on, onto that stage bit because this this thing in the middle is a truck so that moves back and forth. So no, um, we'll we can just go around it. We'll just stay on the front and stage. Let's no. have a look at the dressing room. I do need to look at the back because that's part of it. Uh, no, please, we, we can't really go around we, the back. We can go. We can go on the sides. We and shouldn't. We shouldn't because we, we've done. We've done both the sides. We've gone under the stage. Now let's go to the back stage. But I still need to do that one before I go. That's we're part. Not, <laughs> but that's part of the uh, thing that I agreed on my email. No, 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 we, we yeah, can't do that. We've been, no, to, we've been to the wings. Let's have a look in. This is the dressing room. See? No one's here. Wow. Okay, these are part of the dressing rooms right here. This is quite cool. <laughs> So this is where the story goes or stuff was, doesn't it? This is this is where all the um, the marketing and the communication and the administration happens. Really? So this is where we sort of tell our customers where we tell our customers where But what about who What about the books? The leaflets and books you send out every year. Really? It's just how it happens. We do everything so far in advance. Can we take the song out of the Can't change your beliefs. No. This is so cool. <laughs> this is my first time behind the scenes, which is cool. Sophie over there. Hiya. Lorna. Hello. 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 <laughs> okay? Yeah. Cool. Just like to say this is Marcus Neal. He is the learner de department of the New Wolsey Theatre. And the most important question of all, just to tell you, at um, friends at college and classmates, which is, why would anyone who hasn't been here, Neil, should come to the New Wolsey Theatre? Why should, why should anyone who hasn't come here before yeah. come to the New Wolsey Theatre? The most important question, yeah. Um, well, at this time of year, the pantomime is on, so they should come, if they haven't experienced a rock and roll pantomime before, um, they really should. It's a cross between um, a show and a gig. Um, so there's something for everyone. The soundtrack's amazing. Um, all the actors play instruments on stage. Uh, and it's a fantastic time of year. What makes it so special here compared to the other theatres like Bury and Lower Staff and all other places um, that everyone should come, really come here? Well, this is quite a special auditorium because all of the seats have a really good view. There's no pillars in front of mm -hmm. anyone. Um, everyone gets a good view and the acoustics in here are amazing. Um, so yeah, that's probably the main reason. And you. I did check, you had about 400 seats here to like Bowie's got a lot less and other places maybe big big but they still should come here? Yes, absolutely. Even to the Red Riding Hood? Yep, Red Riding Hood's on until the end of January 2018. That's great. Anything you want to say as well to convince other people to come here? Um, we've got loads and loads of work for young people as well. We've got not only is there a pantomime, we've got lots of really amazing contemporary theatre. We've got theatre made by young people, for young people, um, so we've got something for everyone. Over the traffic lights. Just like on to say, Marcus works at the uh, Lady Lane, which is over I work, there. I work, at the, um, I work at the New Wolsey Studio yeah. on St George's Street. Mm -hmm. It's a hundred seat studio theatre. Which way is it? That way. That way, across there. St George's Street. Mm -hmm. 3NF. Say that again, sorry. IP1 3NF. Thank you very much. Okay. Can you give us like a big wave or a smile and say, please come here? Yeah, both arms or something. Please come here. Yay, and come to the Red Riding Hood. Come to the Red Riding Hood. That is very cool. That is, indeed. We hope you enjoy it and uh, hope a lot of you class and everyone who hasn't been before come here. Thank you very much. And you too, Marcus. No problem. Thanks, James. Thanks. This is cool. Great. Oh, good for you. Yeah, and this is the out. This is the outside as well. It is. Not much scenery, but there you go. Just outside to eat as well. That's it. Lovely. Oh, it's brilliant to meet you. You too, Mark. Nice one. Thanks so much for coming. Yeah. Um, are you interested in acting or anything like that? I'm not, sadly. No, you're just just in presenting. Yeah. Do you want to take? Same to me. 
Can't tell the new Wolves. Oh, just a sec. Oh, it's he's filming. Yeah, go on then. Can't tell the new Wolves in theatre to see Red Riding Hood. Why? It's already because it's exciting. It's got that floor machines, which at our theatres don't have. Loads of seats, lots of entertainment, and it's in sucking it, which, which if you're not far away, really, from very or lower stuff, really. It's not that far. Please come here. It's really exciting. It's only once a year, and it's from November to the end of January 2018. Yay! I'm coming here as well. Because, oh, one last thing. One last thing. I'm coming here on the 27th of January as well. Really, what we call? Thank you. This is James Starkins. Yeah, one last thing. Oh, sorry. Yeah. This is James Starkins recording from the New Wolsey Theatre. Can we just say that bit again? This is James Starkins recording from the New Wolsey Theatre.